you know, I was talking with the Lord and, and I say, what if you look like a human and you walk past me? If you walked across the street, I mean, if, if the prime minister came to town, I'd, I'd be thinking, hey, what's she doing in town? Or if the president of the United States came out at the airport, hey, what's he doing in town? And to why do I tap her? If you walk past as a person, I'd be saying, hey, what are you doing in town? What are you doing in town? I want to put that to you. What is he doing in your town? Because I will follow you and I'll find out what's, what, what you're up to. What's your business? Because I want to be like Jesus about my father's business. Because if he's in town, he's not on a tourist visa. He doesn't just come to visit just to have a bit of a jack. He comes up with a purpose, with an agenda, with a co-papa. And I want to find out, what's, what are you doing in town? What are you doing in town? And I want to put that out to your father. What's he doing in your town? Because he's doing something. He's doing something. He's got an agenda. He's got a co-papa. And I just want to encourage you, find out what he's doing. If, if you don't already know, find out what he's doing in your town. And just... Alliance with him, because he's looking for um, some little helpers. Uh, Joe, could you come up here, please? Joe and Jax. So uh, I just want to introduce some of the ministry team. So we're going to have a ministry team praying. They're going to manaki you. They'll cut a gear for you. And uh, they don't pr pray nice little nicey prayers at all. Please bless them. They want to cast demons out of you. They want to cast sickness out of you. They want to see cancer dissolve. They want to see diagnosis be turned around, okay? So, so uh, the best thing to do is just to share with you uh, just a, a recent miracle. Well, it's actually a year now, but only seems like a few months. But uh, just tell us what happened with, with Jack, sir. So. Oh, kia ora. Um, Jacqueline, our daughter, was 24 years old as last year. Three babies, five and under, and... January the 22nd, um, her youngest child is two years old, Jack started getting um, lumps in her breast. And this kept on going. She'd go into a hospital. We actually thought the hospital would give her a bill for going there all the time. I think she went in like, how many times did she go in the hospital? Like 15 times. And this was during COVID too. So the lumps wouldn't go away. They'd get drained out and then they'd come back and um, not only that uh, she started having seizures and so we had seizures on top of the lumps in the, the breast and then she, with the seizures she couldn't walk she her left leg eh, was all numb and she couldn't walk properly so I had a 24 year old daughter walking around when she could walk, she was in ICU for a bit, on one of those old walking frames. And she was walking like this. And I went to the um, specialist with her at the hospital, because uh, I was like, what the heck is happening? And um, he said to me, that's not right, is it? I was like, no. <laughs> and looking like, and anyway, um, she was going back up to Waikato to get checked up again because uh, the, the doctor over here was getting um, reports back from up there. He had to get help. Um, and so Pastor Norm came round home. And Gigi had just, we call her Gigi, he had just come back from the docks at Puhikaiti to, because the next day she was going back up to Waikato. So Pastor Norm come in and was praying with our family. And Judge come hobbling in with this blooming walking frame inside. And Pastor Norm just went up to Jacqueline and said, you're not guilty. And he said, honey, look at me. You're not guilty. And as soon as that she, because we, we were all watching in the sitting room, and as soon as he said that, and he said, put your eyes up, lift your head up. And she did. And then he <laughs> prayed and he rebuked this thing out of her to get back into the two papaku that it had come from, back up and <laughs> up the coast. <laughs> and we were, I was like, what? And immediately he said, move, start walking. So we knew that this leg was bummed up, and she pushed the thing away, and she starts walking 
or like normal walking. And then after that, she's like, we're like, oh my gosh. And she's walking. And then she said, mum. Because then Norm said, put her, put her hand on her breast. And she felt, because she also, you had a pain in your back too, eh? This thing. When, um, sorry, when Pastor Norm first prayed, I mean, when I first seen him, I felt like this thing over here. And it was like, it felt yuck. It was like coming up. And then when Pastor Norm just talked to me, it just like, I just felt like spewing. And they seen, they seen this thing come out of me. Yeah. yeah. So we saw that. And then it said, put your hand over there. And then the lump that was there, next minute, Jacqueline's going, Mom, the lump's gone. And we're just like, whoa. So we took that walking frame back to where it belongs. And she's not been thing since. She went to the specialists up in Waikato and over here, and they were surprised. They actually said it was healing rather lovely. That was the day after. Thanks, Joe. So, Joe, uh, Al, Lorna, uh, who's on the team, stand up, please. Al, Lorna, and... Anyway, they're, the, they're your ministry. There's a few others as well. So if you want karakia, they're, they've been trained how to do what I do and what he does, actually. <laughs> so they're going to pray for you. So don't make a beeline for me because these are healing wells. We're all carrying healing wells, and we're opening up the healing wells into today, Rafati. It's a prophetic word, and so we're fulfilling it today. So they're carrying healing wells. They have not only been healed, but they carry healing, as you know we do in Jesus' name. So they're here to offer you after the service. Or if you want uh, karakia, they'll be standing up here. And if you want to support or karakia, you just come on up. And it's real stuff. Thanks, Fano. Thanks, guys. So, um, I mean, that's our side. That that's. That's the Jesus we serve. And I'm going to be pushing miracles in your face all through the weekend because that's the culture of heaven. And we, if we don't teach our people how to believe in a supernatural Jesus, then people are going to have to, they'll just put their faith in the next thing, which is medical science. And it's no slight on them. If they're not being taught and given the supernatural Jesus, then they're going to put their faith in whatever. And it's, you know, and so stuff that because our Ihu, our Ihu. He's the healer of the broken heart, the broken body, the broken soul. And uh, our tipuna knew that. And signs and wonders and miracles uh, are commonplace and, and all throughout history. Uh, not you know, in the body of Christ and church and now tipuna, eh? Ratana. You know, just signs and wonders and miracles is normal. It's not some sort of event. It's lifestyle. should flow out of us like a river. So anyway, that, I did just notice this. Could I have a light sort of coming down on me? Like, beam me up, Scotty. Can we do that, Chris, or something? I mean, I, I can read my words, but there's shadows on them. And I want to make sure I'm saying the right stuff. Are you good, Fano? Cool. So, no, nah, can't put that light on. One of them, you just, you just hit, hit a button, <laughs> and it will go on. <laughs> yeah. Or does it interfere with the cameras, Michael? Is it a car, car boy? <laughs> You're in the dark now. Uh, that one. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah, I know, I, I'm in here, I, I've been here for years. And, ah, there you go. Yep, awesome. Does it make, pardon? No, there's not, but anyway. Okay, Fano, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Okay, just imagine now you're going to be spirited up into heaven. Boom, you're up there in heaven. There's the throne of God. There's the Lamb of God. And what are you doing? Worshipping Him. Now, I want you to look to the left. And look, there's all those Africans and Germans and Icelanders and Aussies and... Uh, uh, um, now they're all worshipping Jesus too. The Lamb. In their languages, in their style, look to your right. Hello. You've got all these Asian people and Indians and people and, and all the nations of there, and they are worshipping him also. And just hold that prophetic thought. And Jesus said, when you pray to Father, say, Father, let your kingdom come. And let your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. And the way that the body of Christ operates in heaven, 
all different. The diversity is a wonderful thing. But there's a unity in the diversity. And as it is in heaven, worshiping, serving the same God, the Lamb of God, let it be on the earth. You can open your eyes now. You're in Maranga. Whether you're Māori or Pākehā, whether you're uh, Indian or Asian, whether you're Pacifica, on, in heaven we get on. We work together. We serve God together. We worship the same Lamb together. And Jesus is saying, in that context, I want that on the earth. That's his dream. That's his dream. It, it, it's, the dream that his, it's the dream is that his whānau always are like that on earth as it is in heaven. And we've got to learn to sort of get there and, and operate. Like, that's what maranga is about, collectively joining together, alliancing together, not just to worship God, but to serve God and to serve one another, to serve our communities as the body of Christ, not denominationally led, not politically led, not led by some personality or some man's ministry, because when they die, so will the kopapa. But God's kopapa is forever, that we would not pollute that which he is doing, and that we would facilitate the move of his spirit and allow maranga, you know, allow that spirit of, of God to flow through us to bring transformation in our society, in our communities, as who we are, whether we're Māori or Pākehā, whether we're Pacifica or Asian. Kate's okay, pie? That's as well. So I'm not, this is not my co-papa, this is God's co-papa. So obviously Psalm 133 says if we, if we get that unity that God will command a blessing. Man, I want that blessing. On the body of Christ. You know, when the water level rises in the harbor, every boat rises. And we don't just want the Holy Spirit to rise in our church. We don't just want the Holy Spirit to bless us. We want the Holy Spirit to bless the whole city so all the churches rise. And when the water level rises, all the churches rise. The body of Christ is blessed and our nation is blessed. Our, our communities are blessed. Because God commands blessing only on that type of unity. But to get to that unity, there's a bit of a hikoi, a bit of a journey. Let's work together. Because that's what Holy Spirit's doing. He says, I want my kids to work together in a way that's not been seen for many, many decades in this nation. Because it will bless the land. It will bless our whenua. So he wants to bring kingdom transformation. What is kingdom transformation? Community transformation. It's salvation. It's healings. It's deliverances. It's discipleship. But it's also social change. It helps brings, brings political change and economic change, provides housing, eliminates poverty, provides food, education, better health care, entrepreneurial enterprises. I'm talking about the body of Christ, not the world, the body of Christ. Brings business development, employment. That's transformation. It's not just a great meeting on a Sunday in a church building, but it's transformation in lives and transforming. Ezekiel's temple, 47, Ezekiel 47, uh, Ezekiel saw the temple when it was out of order. There's no glory in it. And when there's no glory in the house, there's no glory in the land. It's a principle. But Ezekiel saw the glory come back into the house. When the house was full of glory because it was back in order, then the glory flowed out of the house and flowed into the Fenua, and it healed the land. And uh, God wants to fill his house, the house of God. His house is you and me together. Once it's filled with his presence, his glory it can flow out of us into our communities in a way we've never seen before. Um, so that's what I want to say. Kingdom transformation, that's what I'm talking about. Kingdom community transformation. Not just some good meetings and one or two mongrel mob get saved. And that's good. That's car pie. <laughs> but we want more than that. We want systematics. So a bit of history. How did we come to, G to Gisborne? Um, 1989, I, was, I, I received a vision from God when I was praying in Oamaru, been serving God for 10 years under Pastor John Ballantyne, me and Jess. And there's me, Jess, Kelly, and Tan. There's just the four of us. And as I was having a cut of gear, I got lifted out of my body, transported up here above Poverty Bay, saw these war canoes, walkers in the water, saw young Nick's head. That's why I knew it was Poverty Bay. And, um, and the Wairua Tapu said to me, you all come here and raise for me a warrior church. We'll move in the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit and the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. And as he's speaking this, I saw people digging themselves out of the dirt, out of the fena, out of the graves. And then they were hearing God's word and they were becoming cleansed. And then they walked on the water and took a place, a seat in the walker, and a walker on the water. And the Spirit of God says, when the time is right by the wind of my spirit, I will send these walker into the nation and the nations of the earth with my message of kotahi tanga, of breakthrough. That's what he said to me. And, uh, and so I'm serving God in Oamaru, happy as, and I get this. I says, you want me to go to a place I've never been to before? My family, you want us to 
uproot and go? He says, yes. I said, well, you better tell Jess. She's a homegirl. She's not going to go nowhere unless you tell her because how can two walk together unless they agreed? Within a few weeks, God told Jess. She just said out of the blue, if God wants us to leave, I'm ready. I'm ready to move because we're family everywhere now. And, um, and so we moved on the 19th of, um, 14th of, uh, of uh, January, 1991. We rolled into town. And uh, we bought a house or rented a house. Oh, we got a, yeah, we got a house. And uh, 28th of April, 1991, we hired a hall to Harper School Hall and opened services, me, Jess, Kelly, and Tan. <laughs> and 36 people turned up that morning and 31 that night. 69, I think that comes to in total. And uh, 12 of them gave their lives to Jesus, committed their lives to Jesus. And there were miracles immediately in that, in that meeting. And when I turned the lights off that night, I said, Wow, God, where'd these come from, these people? He's you've seen nothing yet. And within the next four years, hundreds of people got saved. I mean, there were hundreds, uh, several hundred people in our services. And it was through signs and wonders, miracles, healings, ca cancers dissolving, and, and AIDS being healed, and incurable diseases being healed by the touch of Jesus, but also aroha, love, community transformation, taking kai to people, feeding people, helping people break systematic cycles of dysfunction, uh, violence, and wife beating, and, and husband beating, oh, a lot of husband beating going on too. Ale, not looking at you or anything. The pencil, the pencil. <laughs> it's a long story. But, uh, but we saw lives transformed, marriages restored, Fano's book reconciled. And uh, for the first two years, um, well, no, in 1983, I, I received from the Ministry of uh, Justice, uh, Pastor McLeod, you will receive a check for $200. This grant is made in recognition of the constructive contribution you and your organization have made to the criminal justice system in the past year. As if our church is full of criminals. But anyway, that it was impact, community transformation. Even the world notices the change that Jesus was making in the lives of our people. That's community transformation. Not pie in the sky. Oh, Lord, we're praying. And I, I see a wind coming down the street. And oh, people are dancing in the spirit and dancing in the spirit, blah, blah, blah. And, but nothing's happening really on earth. It's just some, I don't want airy fairy, naughty, arty, farty rubbish. I want the reality. I want bread on the table. I want cancers dissolved. I want see systematic stages of dysfunction broken forever. That We all want that. We don't want to dream about it and read about what happened back then, but what's happening right now. Where's the God of miracles? He's here. He hasn't moved out of town. You've got to find out what he's doing in town, though. So, um, so moving on, fine. I'll just give you a bit of a background. So we came to Gisborne. Uh, the church grew and went, yeah, it, it grew within several years. Signs and wonders. Within, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the Walker Kingdom Ministries, uh, we took, we've taken our Kapahaka teams to well over, what is it, five different nations uh, using kapahaka culture to express Jesus, to present Christ to indigenous groups. And uh, we have taken teams from this, na this hahi to 16 different nations. Our biggest church is in India, about 17 over there. That church grew from 130 to 3,000 in six years. Uncomplicated. Muslims, Hindus, communists, they're not, they're not close to Christ. But it's how we present Jesus to them. And not with some, anyway. So, so just giving a background, our church over there now has got uh, 300 children on the education program, eliminating illiteracy, eliminating poverty, eliminating unemployment, bringing uh, kingdom transformation in the community. That's what we want to see here, though. So uh, after a few years, uh, Television New Zealand heard about this, what was happening down here, and came down and did a video clip on the Mungo mob and added House of Elim Church to that. So can we show that number one mob? The director is Brett Kamal, research by Dominic Andre. of my life. 
means everything to me. If you could change your appearance, would you? No. Then I'd become one of you. I saw uh, lots and lots of walkers, war canoes. And as I was hovering over the canoes looking down, the Lord said that the, the canoes are to be filled and that when I was to come to Gisborne, that he was going to raise up warriors by his spirit out of the earth. Norm McLeod, a former Omaru freezing worker turned pastor, came to Gisborne in 1990 with a dream that became a vision. The work of the Gisborne Elam Church among former members of the mongrel mob has become something of a phenomenon. You will have been here, been with the Lord for four months. I should have done it 40 years ago. <laughs> well, I was gaining nothing out of it, and I saw a lot of hurt. You're making some progress now. Yeah, and so, so we got free advertising all across the nation for, for a couple of years. They, Television New Zealand did two documentaries and put them out on national television because Jesus was doing something. He was kingdom, uh, community transformation was taking place. Uh, the fellow that the end there, he looked down. That's, he's, he's okay now. He's healed. He had marmai in him. He had, he had unresolved issues, trauma that ha hadn't been dealt with. And uh, a quick prayer doesn't fix that. But uh, as, you know, as we walk with our people and, and help them deal with that crap and uh, forget the power, you know, just Jesus sets them free. And he's a different man now. And he's still walking with Jesus. And it's just so wonderful. So, um, so that's our introduction of House of Breakthrough, how we came to be. And uh, little by little we grew. And, and, and then uh, leadership grew. And then wonderful pastors joined us. Trev, Trev was our first pastor. Trev McDowell, he's now a pastor. Deb and Trev and Deb are uh, pastors at Elam Tauranga. And uh, Trevi was uh, one of our first pastors that we trained here. And just flourishing over there in, in Tauranga. And we just love Trev and Deb's uh, like our kids. Well, they are our kids. And... Um, and then so we, we had great leaders in the house, great servants in the house. And then Pastor uh, Lance and Margie joined staff and then Pastor Scotty and just an incredible team that so few can do so much. Uh, just the mahi, just the selfless serving. There's a lot of work to do, but it's just an amazing team. And so our team, uh, uh, you would have seen a uh, fellow there. Uh, he's actually sitting on the front seat there, uh, this Wurumu, the Mungo mob. No, he's not a mob today anymore, but just, he's, there's, there's transformation right there. Uh, you know, didn't ha had a budget of, what, $5 left to spend after Jess took you through budgeting, and, um, and now they're getting paid just about as much as the Prime Minister, is it? <laughs> yeah? And they're serving God. They're just using their matakiti gift and their gift to, to release healing into the uh, into the Māori uh, domain through mental health and with psychiatry, that he'll share more tomorrow. And they're getting paid for using the presence of Jesus to set people free. That's community transformation. Um, so, so I came to Gisborne, go back a bit. So the first few months, I'm praying over the city before we start church, and I'm praying over the city, standing up on Kaiti Hill, to me, to me, I bind every spirit, and I take authority, blah, blah, blah. I take, take the giants in this city, Lord, and... And, and I, he said, hey, we'll take the giants and you first, and then we'll take the giants in the city. I said, nah, what? There must be the devil. I've done 10 years in Omaru. I'm a giant slayer. <laughs> and I was. You know, there's different levels of giants, new levels, <laughs> new devils. And you know, just, because you've, just because you can shoot a gun doesn't mean God's given you the wisdom to win a battle. Yeah. Uh, he hasn't given, just because you can shoot a weapon doesn't mean God's given you the wisdom to take out an army. And many of our people have been taken out because they can't discern between wisdom and assumption, presumption. And, uh, and so, so after uh, 10 years, I'm standing there, God, am I ready to take the chance yet? Is it just about we nearly dealt with you? <laughs> you know, this is thing is about, it's not about us, it's about him. It's about his voice, his will, and his ministry flowing through us. Only he can help our people. Only he can heal our nation. Only he can do it. And he said, I'll do it if my people... Who will call by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn away from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their whenua. He will do it. But yeah, there's a bit of a progress. So I'm cry praying over the city and I'm, I feel like, I felt like blood was crying out of the land. 
And I, so I got in my car and I went down to where I felt it was coming from, down by the foreshore down there at Kaiti Beach. I said, it's coming from around here. I, I feel like weeping, but I'm not a weeper. What is this? I didn't know what it was, so I went to the library, did some research. Don't just pray about it. Do some research. You know, <laughs> be transformed by the renewing of the mind, not deformed by the removal of the mind. <laughs> Okay, just use your wisdom, did some research, heard the history that Cook came here in 19, uh, 1769 and his first arrival there was a, 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 a Maori a warrior was shot and killed to Maru from Ngāti One One and then in the preceding few days several other Maori were shot and killed with the skirmishes between Cook's men and Tangata Whenua. But at that time there was a, in the river there was a rock and this is depicting the rock, Te Toko o Taio, the rock of Taio. And um, on that rock, which is a sacred rock, I think, to, was it to, to is that? Uh, anyway, it's a sacred rock. And this Māori warrior went and stood on the rock. Can you see me standing on the rock? Come on, use, use your sanctified imagination and visualization. And, the, and Cook came over in his yacht, and he got out, and he stood on the rock. And the, both of them, <coughs> Dave, could you come up here, my bro? And, and this is literally what they did. See that picture? You see that? To see what, what, if you've got eyes to see, you can see what the heart of God is for our motto, for our land. <clears throat> for the two races to come together on the rock, Christ Jesus can only be reconciled by the rock when we stand on the rock and there's not one above the other, there's equal footing. And the Wairua Tapu, the Hongi, speaks of the spirit of life, the spirit of Kotahi Tanga, and under that spirit that, that we can come together in a way that United Nations can't do anything, that, that, that uh, tribunals can't force, justice systems can't force people together, but Jesus opens our hearts and joins us together. And that was what happened way back then in 1769. I also did some research and I found that in 1767, a Maori prophet called Toiroa, from down in Mahia, he, he saw many things, uh, birth of Tekuti for a start, but uh, one thing in particular that is relevant to today is that he saw uh, a fair-skinned race of people coming to his land on a craft that he'd never seen before. Apparently he drew it in the sand, which was a sailboat. He'd never seen one before. I mean, this is true, true prophetic. This is the true prophet. And uh, he also said that they will bring their God with them, and the name of their God is the son, is Tama Oruru Kutia, the son who was murdered, the son who was killed. Who is the son who was killed? He said they'll bring their God with them. His God's name is the son who was killed. And then he said, but our people, Māori, will still be oppressed, still be oppressed. <coughs> that was 1767. Three years later, 1769, Cook arrived. The fair-skinned people arrived. 1814, Marsden arrived at the invitation of, of, of Napui, our people, <coughs> up north, it wasn't imposed on us. Christianity wasn't imposed upon us. It was by invitation. And then Marsden went back and then Tangata Fena began to spread the gospel. And from 1814 right through, I think, around to the 1840s, there was the first national revival on Aotearoa. Because there was mainly Maori population, uh, there's figures between 60 to 75% of Maori had turned to Christ. Woo! There was an end to cannibalism and revenge killings and, and war. And, and there was a time in history where Te Wairua Tapu was moving up and down the motu upon the iwi of this land. That was the first revival. Interesting though, on the rock there was Māori Wari at Te Toko Atayo Bahia. We see that thread, followed the thread. Pastor Huri Hanga told me about the threads, followed the threads of Christ. And we see that Marsden, Pākehā, Māori, and Pākehā, through the rock Christ Jesus. How, what happened after that? Pākehā helped Māori. Māori spread the gospel. By the time the missionaries came, that the, the, was the Māori apostles and prophets. They were spreading the gospel. And then the settler church joined and they began to collaborate together. <clears throat> so that's some of the history I found. It's fascinating, isn't it? Um, just going to keep to my timeline. So we had a national revival and it brought kingdom community transformation. 
But God doesn't want just Pākehā apostles and prophets leadership. He wants Māori Pākehā, uh, Māori apostles and, and, and prophets and leadership. Uh, the way it was meant to be, on equal footing, working together, not one above the other, and being free in who we are as Māori, as Pākehā, as Pacifica, as Indian. He wants to bring that back. That's his dream. That's his kaupapa. And if we allow him, he said he will do it. So in 1834, a man called Tomata Kura was, well not 1834, 10 years before that, 1824, he was kidnapped by my tribe, Napui, taken up north to uh, for lunch. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, William Williams rescued him. I think Henry Williams might have been, well, he would have been involved, obviously. And, uh, and so William Williams in, uh, trained uh, or, or taught uh, Tomata Kura, Nadi Paro, uh, about the Lord, and he became a Christian. Ten years later, William Williams brought Tomata Kura back to the East Coast, returned him, and uh, and so he left. Uh, uh, Williams left. Maori Pakia collaborate. See the thread. See the thread. We need one another. We need God, but we need one another because God has a plan for us. If the parents are arguing in the house, the kids are always going to be upset. And if there's not a uh, bicultural kotahitanga first between the two great races, then the multicultural children are going to be squabbling all the time. God, he, he, he puts, he has an order, he has a pattern, and it's beautiful if we've got ears to hear. And so, uh, so Tomato Kura, at the middle of the, he came in the middle of a battle when he was dropped off by Williams. There was a huge battle between Fano, Te Whanau Apanui and Ngāti And there have been two years in preparation to slaughter one another. It was huge. Now, Toma Taukoro started telling the people about the God of forgiveness, Jesus Christ, and that we shouldn't go to battle, but he couldn't stop them. They still went to battle. He said, well, if we go to battle, we, we will pray before we fight. We'll have church on Saturday and Sunday, and we will not uh, uh, murder or kill the survivors. We'll take them off the field, and we will look after them and tend to their wounds, which was before the Geneva Convention. This, this is the rules of battle. And uh, long story short, the peace came to the two, two iwi, and they received Christ. And as a result, the war ended. Kaitangata ended. Revenge killings ended. Um, and then when Williams came back three years later to start the Anglican church on the coast, he'd already found a Maori church of over 2,000 Maori, already meeting and worshiping God, praising God, serving God. Uh, they were selling, uh, and they began to... Um, grow wheat on the, on the coast and sell it to the New South Wales, to the gold rush over there. And so the spiritual change brought economic transformation, social transformation. This is kingdom community transformation that's already taken place before, if we look at our history. That's already happened. And that happened through one man <laughs> who came and shared Jesus with his iwi, many iwi. And uh, that's what happened. Amazing. But see the thread, without Williams, Tomata Kura, it wouldn't have happened. You can see what would happen if, what, why the devil would keep Māori and Pākehā divided and separatism in the church. Because if the church can't get it together, the nation never will. But if the church sort of, can we work together? Well, hecka, will we? <laughs> and the smarang is about, of course we will. Because we're already working, many of us are already working together. Tautoko, everyone who's, who's already doing that. But it's, it, that's God's plan. And if we'll stick at his plan, stick at it, you watch what he's going to do in our land. This nation's waiting to see something, but I think it's looking in the wrong places. <sighs> I think it's a grassroots thing God's doing. Yeah, I'm not a prophet about that, but you know. So, so there we go. There's some history. Mm, 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 mm. So, over the decades, my friend Don Tamahiri said that the Maori leadership was leading the way on the coast, and many Maori were coming to Christ. And I think those leaders were apostles and prophets because you need the five, you need the right recipe. You're going to make a chocolate cake, put chocolate in it. Okay. <laughs> You've got to have the right recipe. You've got to have apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Ephesians 4.11. God said those four ministries will help equip the saints, equip and equip the body. Uh, 
1 Corinthians 2.26, it says God chose first the apostle, then the prophet. It says in Ephesians 2.20 that the foundation of the church is built on the apostle and the prophet. And so if we have not got to have the leadership structure in the right position, God bless the, the pastors, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. But it's not the threefold, it's got to be the fivefold that's going to mature his church. And, uh, and uh, he, God's recipe is apostles and prophets first. Church leadership led by apostles and prophets. Key. And they're in this room right now. Māori, Pākehā, Pacifica, Asia. And you're here. Some of you are called. And these are callings from God. You can't just say, well, if I work hard, I might get promoted to be an apostle. It's in you from birth. Before I was born, Jeremiah said, God knew me. Before I came out of my mother's womb, he had set me apart as a prophet to the nations. These are giftings God puts in before birth. And we've got to be humble enough and wise enough to acknowledge that we're all important. It's not our title that makes us important. It's him that makes us important. Our significance is not in our ministry. Our significance is in our relationship with Jesus. He's everything to me. He's everything. Not ministry, not titles, not positions. And so you'll notice the, the real apostles, the ones that Jesus has chosen, and the real prophets, they won't be like CEOs of businesses ruling from the top. They'll be the ones like Jesus. When he left, he was the greatest apostle. When he left, Jesus washed the feet of his people. He got down on his knees and washed the feet of the body. And he said, the example I'm leaving you is the example I'm, I'm leaving you, that I'm the king of kings. And this is what... A great apostle does, washes the feet of his people, serves his people from beneath and lifts them up. And now the characteristics of the apostles and the prophets that God's raising up on the mutu, just so you know, just saying. There'll be all sorts of ones say that the title is more important than the fruit. And you look at the fruit, not the title. It's like Maori them, the komatua that speak on the pai pai. They don't put themselves there and vote themselves in. They're put there by the mana, they, their, their mana, the people see their mana, and the people put them there because they recognize the mana, the gift of the calling. And when God sends apostles and prophets, you know who they are. They won't be waving a degree at you, <laughs> flashing a Bachelor of Divinity, had the demon come out in the name of Jesus. I'm educated. <laughs> it, it, it will be Christ. When Jacqueline, when I saw her, and I saw on her an old woman, and the Holy Ghost said, this is an old woman's disease. And it came from a person in the whanau, and who died on the Urupa. Now send it back. So I told her to go back. Now I looked at Jacqueline, and I says, you're not guilty. You think you're guilty. You don't deserve healing. You're not guilty. I said, hold my hand. And she held my hand. I said, imagine I'm the devil, and all I'm feeding into you, and you're holding onto it. I'm feeding this stuff. Now you're useless. You're a piece of crap. You don't deserve to be healed. But this hand, let go and take hold of this hand. If you keep believing these lies, that's what's going to feed into your tinana, your body. Take hold of this hand. I'm Jesus, and you're worthy, and I get my blood for you, and I love you, and you're my princess, and you're healed. And I said, that's what's feeding into you. And I said, you're not guilty. You're not guilty. This is sort of the uh, more the detailed version. And, and then she just began to rise and to walk. And that's what we are called to speak into our people. And they're not guilty. We're, because we're all guilty. All have sinned. Uh, but we know that. It's about seeing people from his point of view. Seeing our earth from heaven's point of view. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Working together. And I know many of you are already doing that. Okay, yes, Jesus. Um, okay, so I want to go back in history. Uh, so Tomata Kura having revival here, and uh, there's a revival up north, and there's a move of God, there's a, re, uh, a cultural revival. And then um, the Treaty of Waitangi, which means covenant for Māori, it was a covenant. We, we thought it was a covenant, regarded as a covenant between God, the crown, and Māori, not knowing the crown was a snake. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there's just a naivety, I guess. And uh, so the treaty was signed, working together, called Tahitanga Māori Pākehā, see the thread. <coughs> but uh, the crown was a snake, and with uh, two kudu years, 1842, uh, treaty was violated. And uh, that violation of the Treaty of Waitangi 
uh, led to decades and decades of brutal colonization, and which Māori are still under the yoke of, still suffering today, land confiscations and the colonization too, and the decline of Māori in church. Maranga, it's about breaking that settler church leadership mode and restoring back the bicultural leadership model of Māori and Pākehā on the rock together. Are you here? It's God's will. It's his dream. It's his. And he wants to do something. <coughs> this church, it's Māori. It's Pākehā. We've been getting on for the last 30 years doing the mahi. Helping transform our community. It's not in you. And there's many of you, it's happening in your mutu as well. It's wonderful, isn't it? But it's not very common. It's not. I travel around the mutu. And it's not common everywhere. And it's meant to be, it's meant to be normal. And a divided house can't stand. And I feel what God says out of Marang, He wants our hearts to overflow and to see the value on Maranga of coming together, of alliancing with others in our, in our region. Don't, don't forget about the name of their church. Look, we all need each other. We need each other. And we need to begin to honor and recognize the gifting on one another's lives and accept that and use... Anyway, so God said to me, how are you going to reach Maori, Norm? I said, I have no idea, Lord. Uh, you sent me here. We reached, uh, reached a few of our people. I'm not just reaching Māori, but he said, how would you reach Māori? I said, I don't know. He said, no, because I didn't put it in your heart to reach all Māori. I put it in the hearts of other Māori apostles and prophets in the nation. They, they know how to get Ngāpui, Ngātipuro, Ngātahu. I put it in their apostles and their prophets. They know how to reach them, not you. It's not up to you. I said, oh, thank God. He says, yeah. <laughs> and he says, but you need to, he said, I want to bring an alliance to totoko, to afi, not to control them, but to help them to believe in themselves. You're not guilty. Stand up, rise up. Shirk off those, 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 that, 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 that whakama. And stand, get off those colonial, get off those, those colonial shackles and get above that stuff and see yourself as you are in Christ. Be, believe in God, but believe in yourself and stand on the rock as a leader of God for your people. Oh, that's awesome. He says, so you just look for those, those fellas and you total call them because they're going to reach Māori. And he said, how are you going to reach Pākehā? I said, oh, man, well, I've got a few clues. <laughs> Not many. He that wins souls is wise. <clears throat> and um, I said, I have no idea, though. He said, no, I put it in other Pākehā apostles and prophets in the nation. They know how to reach Pākehā community. Not just you. And he says, your collective wisdom joined together can touch a nation, but your individual wisdom of yourself can only touch your little sphere. Kia ora, son. Tamiaho. Thank you for coming. And you flew in. Oh, you must have come in with that eagle. I hear it's pretty windy out there. <laughs> oh, awesome. And then they'll say, how will, you reach, how will you reach Pacifica? I didn't know I had put so much on myself. How am I going to reach, the, how am I going to reach these people? How am I going to change the world? Uh, he said, how are you going to reach Pacifica? I said, I have no idea. He said, of course not. You don't know how. But I put it in the heart of Pacifica apostles and prophets how to reach their people. This makes sense, doesn't it? Stop trying to use Pākehā models or Māori models or, or Pākehā models for Māori or Māori models for Pākehā. Just use wisdom and get the collective wisdom that I'm giving the body of Christ. It's already among you. <laughs> you think I'm joking. <laughs> there is a picture. It's of uh, Petra. So it's at least it's a biblical picture. All I had was Singapore and Ferris wheels. Was like, oh, God. Is it the wedding funny? I said, give me something better than that. Oh, that's that. So that's a spiritual, eh? Spiritual. Nothing spiritual about Ferris wheel in Singapore. Well, some of you prophets will say. So anyway, <laughs> we're all part of the picture, the body of Christ. Difference of ministrations, but the same spirit. Difference of gifts, but the same spirit. Different outworkings, but the same God. So just fill them up, Al, and you'll probably need a few because. Um, and I want you to take a piece and hang on to it. What does it mean? That the body of Christ is like a jigsaw puzzle. And you're never going to see the whole picture of what God sees. See, I'm a piece of the puzzle. 
and I know I've got a call on my life of Kotahi Tanga, and I know I've got a call on my life. But it's not the only piece of the, of the picture. And there was a time in my immaturity I thought I was. I'm raising my piece. This is what God's saying. Can't you see it? Uh, sort of. Well, there's someone over there saying the same thing. But it's when you connect your piece together. So, oh, and another piece connecting. Oh, 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 I just thought it was a blob. But it's a shape. It's a, and when you put your pieces together, you see the picture. And God wants his body to knit together, build up in love. And if we don't connect, you don't get to see the tonga, the picture, the gift that God has given you and given me and him and her and everyone else. And we see what God is saying and the picture that God is painting for our nation. If we don't connect together, if we don't connect together, if we don't connect together, you've got to connect together. And so instead of waving my little piece, hey, look at me, listen to me. So it's when my peace joins with your peace, and your peace joins with And I'm talking, okay, not a, the body of Christ, we all form the picture, the love picture of the body. But there's a leadership. There's a head that he's calling. There's a leadership he's raising up in the nation. And there are apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. And it's got to start with apostles and prophets until apostles and prophets begin to knit together and share their peace of what God is showing them at this time in history. Because their pieces, when we put them together, we say, we can hear what God is saying through his head. Now, his head, he chose first apostles and prophets, not me. He did. It's his recipe, so take it up with him if you have a problem with that. Just because you can shoot a weapon doesn't mean God has given you the wisdom to win a battle, to, to take out an army. But he's given the collective wisdom to his apostles and prophets to help lead to help lead, help to equip, and, and evangelists and pastors and teachers to help equip and to lead. Not to control, but to lead. It's not a denominational thing, neither is it a personality thing, neither is it a political thing. It's simply a Holy Ghost thing, a heaven thing. It's a co-papa. And if we don't focus, keep a, if we don't keep on the co-papa, focus on the co-papa, if we take our eyes off the co-papa and look to politically or denominationally or personalities, we'll lose that. The parable of the jigsaw piece. <clears throat> Can we work together? Can we put this puzzle together? Can we? Oh, we better pray about that. I don't know, Pastor. Can we, can we put this puzzle? Can we get a picture out of this? Ooh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. No, I won't say that. I'll... <laughs> what do you mean? Can we? Of course we can. Just put the pieces together. And it's about knitting together, not in mahi. And I've been to too many meetings where we're going to get together, we're going to have prayer meetings, and we're going to pray change over our nation, and we're going to pray our pants off. That's not the one. Bad, bad example. <laughs> Keep them on. Keep your pants on. <laughs> Eta. We're going to pray, and we're going to bind the devil, and we're going to rebuke principalities, and and and... Amen, amen, and amen. And we go home and nothing changes. And the city doesn't change. And the people are still got poor. And there's unemployment and illiteracy and poverty and violence all still going on. But we pretend, oh, no, we're prayed and God is doing something. Well, uh, God's got a strategy. But for that strategy, we come together in synergy. Before synergy, you've got to have unity. Before unity, you've got to have humility. And... Um, it's about relational unity first. It's not about ministry unity. It's not about coming together and forming a, a Christian. Well, it's part of it. Let's have a Christian party. And, uh, a lot. I will go to battle with the friends that I've got relationship with, and I know they've got my back and I've got theirs. I will fight with them because I have relationship. But I ain't going to go fighting with them if I don't even know who they are. And it's always about relational first. Jesus taught this. I only do what I see my father do, relational with the father. And he was relational with his, with his people, with his disciples. You know, that relationship, that, that, that aroha came, that, that, that love relationship. Then came mahi, work, serving. I will die for you because I love you and I know you love me. But if I don't know if you love me, 
And so I've been to so many meetings. We sit around a table and we talk about, can we work together? I says, I don't know about you. I don't even know you. Can I trust you? And, and, I, and I'm not, this isn't a... You know, do you understand? Do you, do you know me? Do you know how I work? I don't know how you work. Your style of church and your style of presenting Jesus to you, I mean, it's foreign to me. I'm not saying it's wrong, but... Can I just get to know you first instead of sign up and stand and be in agreement with you about what you're doing in this city? Well, I might not even agree with it because I don't even know what it is. Can I get to know you first and have some, some relational unity going down? And then out of that relationship, then comes, now, to do that takes humility. <laughs> takes humility to take your peace and say, I'm not the answer to the world. I'm just part of it. Uh, can you hand them around now? Just, and, and, and I've... I'm not the answer. I'm part of the answer. Apostles and prophets in a nation are part of the answer. They're not the whole answer. Evangelists, pastors, teachers. Oh, you dropped the puzzle. <laughs> so anyway, this is the parable of the jigsaw. Can we work together? Well, if we sat down together and put our pieces together, we'd get a picture. Of course we can work together, but why should we? Because it's his dream. It's his dream. And, we're, and nothing else is working. And the present state of the church, for 200 years now, it hasn't brought a national revival except in the early days through Tangata Whenua, when it was led by apostles and prophets in collaboration with Pakia. There was a national revival and transformation. God wants to do it again. We've got to learn to work together. Um, and so... I'd encourage leaders here. Well, you, some of you already do it in your own cities. I, I, I preach to the converts here. Sorry, forgive me. I'm preaching to the choir. Some of you are already doing it, doing great things like Dave and uh, Linda Dishroom and Saint and Karen and and uh, Richard and and uh, uh, Andrew is Andrew uh, up up at uh, Napui Land and you know you guys working together. You know, all over the world too, it's happening. But uh, I'm, I'm, I think Lord God's talking about get the leadership alliance, apostles and prophets from the nation together, Maori apostles and prophets, Pākehā apostles and prophets, Pacific apostles and prophets, etc. But get the Maori and Pākehā. Let's 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 begin to call it all together. Let's begin to relate together. Get to know one another. Get to show respect and honour to each other's gifting, knowing it's given by God. And that how can we use our gifting? to serve one another in order to bring community transformation because nothing else is working and it won't work because God only blesses unity and he can't bless unity unless there's some, that type of humility. We will sit together and work together. Humility will bring unity, then unity will bring a synergy, then a synergy will bring a strategy. And that strategy will come out of the collective wisdom of those God has given to build his body to reach a nation. Yeah, I know it's good because I, I didn't think it up. <laughs> God gave it to me. Um, alliance together. So a few years ago, I had a dream. And uh, in the dream, I saw I was taken up to uh, Cape Rianga. And I'm up there about 1,000 feet in the air with Jesus, and we're looking down on the land, and I see these little black dots coming across the Pacific Ocean, and they come to the top of the North Island, the, the white lighthouse up there, Cape Ranga, and I see these little black dots hit, come to the land, and they'll, fly, they'll begin to fly through the nation. They were coming across the sea like little jet fighters, so fast. I thought, what are they, Lord? And he says, look closer. So I went, he gave me X-ray, you know, that vision. And you know what I saw, what these little black dots were? You'll never believe what they were. I couldn't believe it when I saw them. They were shrunken Māori heads, tāmoko. <laughs> shrunken Māori heads, a tāmoko one. I said, what are you showing me Māori heads for? He says, because I'm bringing the Māori heads back to the Māori body of Christ. He says, I'm bringing the heads back to the Māori body of Christ. Yeah. I'm bringing the heads back to the Māori body of Christ. He said that. I saw it. He said it. And he said, go through the nation and identify them just to... I feed them. And that's what I'm doing. And it's not just Māori. It's Pākehā as well. But he's given me a mandate to help Afi and Tautoko, those who've got that calling on them, 
who have maybe it's been suppressed or oppressed by upbringing, by background, by, I don't know, by any number of things. But God wants to say, hey, it's time to rise, just like Jack went, time to rise. Shrug off those grave clothes. Tell that kihua back to the urupa. Hurry out to Rohi Kuraiti. Out. Not by our mind or power. I know I'm weak ass. I've got no power. I, I know it. Believe me, I know it. But he is the power. And if I can die, <laughs> if I can be crucified with Christ, then it's not me anymore. Then it can only be him. It can only be his spirit. I got a phone call uh, uh, in the middle of the night, 4 a.m. in the morning from India, face, uh, FaceTime. And it's my pastor, one of my, my son over in India. And he's on his deathbed dying. And the family said, Father, uh, Daddy, he's, he's no good. And, and his eyes are shut and he looks like he's dead already. I said, no, God, no. No. Not another one. I want more wins than... I, so I, so I, I, just kind of, I just prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And as I prayed, I felt the Lord said, now breathe on him. Breathe your breath, the breath of life on him. So I said, son, I, I know you can't hear me. Maybe you can. If you can, put your hand on your chest. And he put his hand up. He had his eyes shut. He put his hand there. I went, tahi rua toru. And, and as I did that, the breath of God touched him. Traveled 10,000 Ks. <laughs> Boom. And touched him. And he went, and his eyes opened. His eyes opened. And then he began to move. Around. And then he literally, you see that glow that comes on people? The glow, the glow came on him. And his sons and his daughters said, when you did that, Father, the room filled with the presence of God. And, and, and so he got discharged the next day. And it's, been, it's an ongoing battle. Hang on. It's, it's an on, ongoing thing. You don't just win one battle. The devil's at war. You don't just win one skirmish. You've got to keep fighting until you've you know, won the war. And, uh, and so he had some... some, some Back, you know, fallbacks. Anyway, long story short, prayed for him again just the other day. And uh, he said, the doctor said I'll need open heart surgery if nothing has changed. I'm going for my test today. And I just got word yet, uh, yesterday. He said, the doctor says you don't need open heart surgery, just a couple of stents. And he's had the procedure done and he's shining, he's glowing. Uh, why am I sharing that? Uh, because we carry the breath of life. To revive, we carry this Jesus. This and, and, and oh yeah, that's why I, I I said, Lord, there's there's nothing on me left. It's, all I've got is you. You're the only breath I've got. I'm not. I'm dead. It's you that lives in me. I'm no longer alive. It's you, Lord. So flow through me. And He did. He did. He did. To do my own and to bring what He wants to bring, we've got to get rid of ourselves. We've got to. We've got to have our own funerals. And the problem is sometimes we haven't had our funeral. I didn't realize I had to have so many of them. <laughs> Just when you think you're dead. Ha-ha! Oh! <laughs> Not so dead. But you... Steps up a good man and woman are ordered by the Lord. He delights in our way. Though we fall, we'll not be cast down. He'll lift us up. As long as we'll lift... God help me. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Can I have another go? And another go. How many times? He said, just keep following me. It's not an easy path. Abraham would take it otherwise. It's a narrow road. But it leads to life. And this is about the life of our nation, not just the life of your ministry, the life of your church. It's the life of our nation. And our children and our children's children. And I look at the demographics here and I see more, uh, and God bless you, this, I just see more um, elderly, older ones than young ones. And I think it's the Holy Spirit saying to me, to me anyway, I've got to turn the hearts of the fathers and the mothers to the children before the children can turn their hearts back to me. And so I think we collected a little bit of wisdom over the years. It's about, we're, most of us are over denominationalism and politicalizing and the whole Western church concept system. We just want Jesus. We want works, what's, what works, and it's Him. And... Um, and, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's go back to basics. So, what do apostles, I told you what they look like. They look like they'll get down on the knees and vacuum your, you know, vacuum you. They'll wash your feet. They will serve you. They will there to serve you and to lift you up by serving you. And our leadership is a gift that serves by leading and teaching and all that. But it's also by the mahi, by out there doing the stuff, casting out devils. Apostles are marked by casting out devils, 
healing sick people, N not praying for the sick. <laughs> oh, sorry, this might upset you. Stop praying for the sick. Jesus never called you to pray for the sick. Heal the sick. A uh, new concept, go and heal the sick. If you go, well, I'm going to pray and see what happens. I have this mindset, I'm going to go and heal them. Yeah, I know I can't heal anybody, blah, 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 blah. Okay, stick your little religious devil back in there now. Okay, no, we can't. But through Christ Jesus, we can. It's not us, but it's him through us. And in his name, you will cast out devils. You will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Jesus said, go heal the sick. Don't go and pray for them. I think if you start going to heal the sick, you'll see a, a better result. Because you expect them to be healed. And they do get healed. Anyway, moving on. I'm coming to a close now, Fano. It's been a bit of a fruit salad, but I'm setting it up for tomorrow because tomorrow you're going to hear about, um, about uh, Fano here that God's using to bring community transformation in their motu. And it's a marvelous thing. And it's not just the 12 or 14 that are speaking. There's, many are doing that, but we don't have time for everybody. But just to hear what they're doing and just to be an, an you know, encouraged. I'm going to be really encouraged. I already know what they're doing, but to hear it again, wow. So in closing, 1997, um, I didn't have much understanding of the Treaty of Waitangi. I just had this naive spirituality that we're all one in Christ. And we are, spiritually, you know, I know technically we are. And that there's neither Jew nor Greek nor male nor female nor bond or flea. I quoted Galatians. And, and, um, but we are different. And God loves diversity. He's not trying to bring every, everybody into uniformity. It's not about uniformity. You follow me and be like me. It's a, the, there's unity in diversity. Because look at the flowers. Look at creation. God loves diversity. And the body is diverse in different cultures and different. And we shouldn't have to apologize for who we are. And who we represent and where we come from. I'm not going to. I love, I'm, I'm part, I've got Spottish lineage and Spottish. <laughs> Scottish lineage and Maori lineage. And I'm proud of both. And I don't have to make an apology. God made me this way. And it's Kate's pie. Love who you are. Love who God made you. And it's not uniformity, it's unity. And in the alliance and together, to share our gifts, to help affi one another, to reach our respective communities. Oh, it's a wonderful thing. So in 1987, I, was, uh, uh, I, I thought I'd pray over a map of New Zealand, a tribal map, just to be spiritual. So I lay on top of this tribal map. I said, God, show me what you're doing in our nation, and especially with Māori. And, um, and so I was unexpectedly taken out of the room. And taken up into the heavens, not heaven, into the heavens where the satellites are. It's really dark up there, but the earth was, is, is, is covered with the glory of God. And as I was taken up there, I was looking over the west coast, over Taranaki region. And God the Father was sitting on the throne, and His glory was lighting up the whenua, up the whole coast, the whole Aotearoa, God of nations at thy feet. It's a real thing. And as I'm standing over here watching God looking down on the whenua, I saw a group of Maori walking along the coastline, and they were just walking dressed in what looked like dark funeral clothes, and there was smoke coming off them. I thought, what's that smoke coming off them? And on the other side of the throne of God was the church, which I was part of at the time in the sense of, give us revival, give us revival, give us revival. And it was a constant wine, 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 wine. And, um, and God the Father sitting there like this. And it was 97 because Ken Mayer was protesting in Motua Gardens at the time. And so when I saw these Māori and uh, when I saw how God responded to the cries of Tangata Whenua, I thought, you yeah. know, anyway, we'll go back there in a minute. And so I saw the smoke coming up and it came all the way up, it looked like smoke or steam from Tangata Whenua, from the youngest to the oldest. And it came all the way up to the ear of God. And I, as the smoke got closer, I saw words, who will hear our cry for justice? Who will help our children? Where is our hope? Where is our future? And I realized it's incense. That the, these are the prayer, the cutting here. This is the incense of Māori over generations saying, God, who will help us? Whether it's colonization or pre-colonization, whatever it was, is a wound. And it's coming up, the cry of the tongue of the whenua. It's coming up to the throne of God himself. And this is what God does. He turned his ear to their cry. He turned his ear. And I'm over here thinking, 
Ken Mir, Mochua Gardens, is God on the side of the Māori radicals in the gardens? And straight, quick as a flash, the Lord speaks. He speaks to your thoughts. He says, their cry is a just cry. So I knew nothing about colonization, nothing about the violation of the treaty. I thought, we're just all, we're all happy people. We're all one, and we are. And we're, God was still saving, transforming. And, uh, and then he said to me, their cry is a just cry. Now, the other side of the throne, give us revival, give us revival. But I saw in 1997, where the ear of God, what he was listening to, a cry coming out of our land, a cry coming from a wound that needs to be healed. And then when I was brought back to the earth, he challenged me, he said, what do you know about the Treaty of Waitangi? And I quoted Galatians, and he rebuked me. He says, you're full of yourself, and you need to, you need to study the Treaty of Waitangi, the factual history, and know the truth of your nation, because how can you be a minister of truth? You don't even know the truth of the history of the nation you come from, or the land you come from, or the people you come from. How, yeah, we research for other things, but uh, what's the church doing? Oh, no, we just saw one, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I researched it, and I went on a journey which has brought me to where I am today. And I know a little bit about the history and what the will of God is. All this to say, when I saw that ear turn, God, the, the body of Christ, yeah? We are the body. And I saw the ear turn. And the other day when I was praying about this, and he said, finish on this, I saw the ear again. And it turned to many Pākehā listening to the cry of Māori. Because for 10 years, the last past 10, 10 years ago, there was few, and this isn't a slight or a judgment, but there wasn't very many people interested or churches interested about the treaty and Māori, Tanga and so forth, and how to reach Māori other than just, it wasn't. But today, around this nation, in the past 10 years, there are Pākehā, whānau, all across our mutu, saying we understand, we hear what we hear what God's hearing. He that has ears to hear, he that has eyes to see, he that has heart to perceive, and he's opening the ear of, of, of Pākehā leaders, apostles and prophets especially, and they're hearing. We have to deal with this stuff. If we're going to come together and call Tahitang, we have to understand and deal with it, how we deal with it. You know, and there's another story. And he said to me tonight in this room, he said, There are Pākehā here who are my ear. And he said, The wind of his spirit will come upon you because you hear the cry. And as I'm speaking now, that's, 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 what, that's holy. Just let it go. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just let it go. Just let it flow through you. And he says, you'll hear the cry. So I'm going to do something a bit unusual. What's new? Jess, come up here, please, darling. Uh, come on up. Uh, Lance and Margie, Scotty, Jules. Come on. Come on up. Come on up. Hey. Um, pastors from other churches and the uh, and Komatua, uh, come on up, come up here and stand on, on the rock. No my, come on, no my, how do my? Come on, don't be fakama, don't be fakama. We're all part of this. We're all a piece of the jigsaw. And when we connect together, God reveals what he's doing. And it's not by our might or power. It's by his spirit. And it's not a voice. It's the voice of his body speaking. And he said, as I blow the, the kawawo, that there will come a, a wind. See, we've been doing this for 30 years. This nation has been doing this for, for decades. Māori and Pākehā are working together. But this is something new on another level. It's about alliancing now with the structure of, of apostles and prophets, of leadership and, uh, and other stuff. It's, it's about alliancing together. So, so there's some of us up here. Obviously, we're not going to get the whole, <laughs> the whole, everyone up here. But 
when I blow the kawawa, uh, he, he said that uh, Pākehā will be the ear, and you will hear. And as you hear the sound, if you feel moved, just come on up and just stand with us. That's all it is. Just stand together. Okay, you ready? When you hear the sound, don't wait for me to call. Just, just let the wairua tapu touch you and be moved. Because he says there's many ears he's opening. And it's not just the cry of Maori. It's, it's what God is saying, what we're to do about this, and how we're to bring healing from the wound of our nation. And yeah, it's not endless sort of forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. It's not going over and over to me, to me, licking our wound. But it's about a genuine uh, working together and understanding one another on a relational level, relational unity. So if you hear the, if you feel it, just come on up.